Hey guys, it's Diana. I'm so uh, happy to be able to offer a Hot 26 practice for you from my garage. Um, so just a couple of pointers before we get started. Um, because you're at home, you have the option to take this inside and not be hot. Or if you choose to make it heated, you can take it outside. I like to practice in the garage. It's, I find it's the hottest place uh, in my house. But if you are practicing in the heat, please make sure that you hydrate and that you take breaks if you feel lightheaded or faint. So just like in class, lie down as much as you need to. And then when you're ready to get back up, get back up and join me. You can also, ha you have the beauty of pause as well. So feel free to pause me, take a moment, and then come back. So what I've done here, because Hot 26 is really hard to cue and do at the same time, I recorded myself um, ahead of time, and I'm going to do the practice with you. So with that said, let's get started. Come to the center of your mat. Bring your feet together, arms down by your sides, and just start to become in tune with your breathing. Level out the chin. Squeeze up through your legs. Tuck the tailbone under. Pull the low belly in. Palms will face forward. Draw the shoulders down your back. We're going to start off with our breathing exercise. Feet will stay together, toes, heels, touch. Interlace your fingers into a fist. Glue your fist to your chin. Knuckles of the thumbs will rest on the throat. Exhale all of your air. And begin. Inhale. Eyes on your eyes in the mirror. Chin stays level. Elbows will come up so that forearms frame the face. Exhale, look up to the ceiling, squeeze the elbows together in front of you, then lift them slightly off your chest. Inhale, constrict the back of your throat. It should sound and feel like a snore. Exhale, open the mouth, let it out audibly, like it's a cold day and you're trying to see your breath. Good. Inhale, eyes will meet eyes by three, elbows will peak by six. Exhale, eyes to the ceiling by three, and elbows will press by one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, hold. Inhale. You have six full seconds to breathe in, so take your time. Use your lung capacity. Exhale. Don't let it all out at once. Pace yourself and reach the depths of your lung. Inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Exhale. Six, five, four. Three, two, one, hold. Inhale, bring the weight back into your heels. Imagine a nice straight spine from the backs of the feet to the crown of the head. Exhale, keep the legs tight, belly nice and firm so that you're only hinging back at your neck. Inhale, as you lift the elbows up, draw the shoulders down your back. Feel a broadening through the chest. Exhale. As you squeeze your elbows together, think shoulder blades to spine. Feel a nice stretch along the upper back. Inhale. Your breath is the fuel that powers you through your practice, so fill up completely. Exhale. Release anything that doesn't serve you in this moment. When you feel that you're empty, squeeze out even more air. Inhale. This is your final breath, so make it your deepest, fullest breath yet. Expand your lungs. Exhale, empty, empty, empty the lungs as you push out the old to make space for something new. Good. Now bring your hands down by your sides. You can lick your lips a few times. And we're going to move straight into our warm-up postures. So we refrain from taking water during the warm-up so that we really get our bodies warmed up from the inside out. If your feet separated, bring your feet to touch. 
And now sweep your arms sideways and up. Interlace your fingers, release the index, and cross the thumbs. Squeeze the legs nice and strong, stretch up tall, and now arc up and over to the right as you bump your hips to the left. Now we're in this posture for one full minute. We're going to build it from the ground up. Bring the weight back into your heels. If you notice the toes lifting up off the mat, spread them out and glue them right back down. Find stability in your feet. Now feel that stability travel up your legs as you zip everything up nice and tight. Feel the kneecaps pull up. Feel the glutes engage. And create that nice firm foundation in the lower half of your body. As you push your left hip out, watch that it doesn't peel back. Bring it forward so that both hip bones are pointed directly in front of you. Pull your belly nice and tight and allow yourself to pull a little bit more up and over towards the right side of the room. And now draw the shoulders down your back, giving your ears some space. But watch that left armpit. It might have snuck forward. So right armpit forward, left armpit back. Now pull up and over for three, two, one. Come back to center. Keep the arms nice and strong above your head. With an inhale, lift. With an exhale, pull up and over to the left as you bump your hips to the right. Remind the weight back into the heels. If you feel those toes lifting up, you spread them out and glue them right back down. This is your foundation. Now reestablish that strength in your legs. Zip everything up nice and tight. Feel the kneecaps pull up. Feel the glutes engage. Maintain that foundation in the lower half of your body. This time, the right hip may have snuck back, so if it did, bring it forward so that your waistband evens out. Re-engage the belly and begin to pull more up and over to the left. We want to feel a nice stretch along the right side of the body, taking any curvature out of the low spine. No back bend here. Draw the shoulders down your back, and this time you watch that the left armpit didn't sneak too far back. So roll it forward so the chest stays even. Now squeeze your arms as strong as you can get them. Pull up and over for three, two, one. Come back to center. Keep the arms lifted, but drop your head back. Shake it no a few times. You may want to take some knee bends here, giving your legs a little bit of a break. Now squeeze your legs nice and strong. Look up towards the ceiling and arc up over and back as you bump your hips forward. It's your first back bend of class, so don't muscle too much into it. Keep the weight into your heels and really sque squeeze the glutes and push the hips forward as you press your heart up towards the ceiling. Now look for the wall behind you. Try to touch it for three, two, one. Come back to center. Now... Hinge forward and down. Keep a straight spine and a firm belly. If you feel that the spine begins to round, bend your knees on the way down. And once your hands make it down to your mat, it's your first opportunity for free movement. So really take a moment to just do what feels good. It may feel really nice to pedal out the heels or take some really deep squats. But really, this moment is all about what feels good to you. So give yourself a, a moment. Beautiful. If your feet have separated, bring them right back together. Toes, heels, touch. Now squat your legs deeply. Glue your chest to your thighs. Wrap your arms behind your legs. Scoop up the heels for, from behind. If the heels are not accessible, go ahead and reach for the Achilles. The goal here is to get the forearms behind the calves rather than out to the sides. So get as tight as you can, and once you have your, drip, your grip, drop your head and lift your hips up towards the ceiling, using the strength of your arms to pull your chest closer to your thighs. The straight legs will come in time. What you want first and foremost is a nice straight spine. So if there's any tension in the head, let it go. Let it drip down towards your toes. Now wrap the arms a little bit closer behind you. One day those elbows are going to touch. Take an inhale. As you exhale, pull, pull, pull. Interlace your fingers, come out the same way you went in, straight spine, firm belly, all the way back up to standing with arms overhead. Now relax your arms down by your side. 
We'll do that sequence all over again, this time half as long. Sweep the arms sideways and up, interlace the fingers, release the index and cross the thumbs. You might want to take the opposite grip here. So when you uh, grip your hands, just the way that feels unnatural, the opposite thumb on top. Give it a try. Squeeze the legs nice and tight, stretch up tall and arc up and over to the right as you bump your hips to the left. Good, bring the weight back into the heels and now you find your depth. So feel that stretch from the fingertips all along the left side of the body down to the outer blade of the left foot. You can press a little bit more weight into the outer blade of the left foot to help bump your left hip further out, really creating that half moon shape along the left side of your body. Now square the hips, square the armpits. Pull up and over for five, four, three, two, one. Come back to center, arms stay lifted. With an inhale, stretch up. With an exhale, arc up and over to the left as you bump your hips to the right. It's a different side, so it may feel completely different. Find that stretch from the fingertips all along the right side of the body down to the outer blade of the right foot. Pressing a little bit more weight into the outer blade of the right foot will help bump your right hip further out really accentuating that stretch along the right side of the body. But we never compromise the alignment. So square off the hips, square off the shoulders. Now pull up and over for five, four, three, two, one. Come back to center, arms stay lifted, drop the head back, shake it no, let it go. Feel free to take a few more knee bends if that felt good the first time around. And now squeeze your legs strong, look up towards the ceiling, and arc up, over, and back as you bump the hips forward. And now you may see more of the wall behind you because you're more warmed up. But keep squeezing the glutes, pressing the hips forward as you push your heart up towards the ceiling, creating the half moon along the back side of your body. Look for the wall behind you and go for it for three, a little more, two, you got it, one. Come back to center, see your eyes first, and then hinge forward and down with a straight spine and a firm belly, always giving yourself permission to bend your knees on the way down. Once your hands reach the mat, it's your final opportunity for free movement. Whether you do this practice all the time or maybe this is your very first time, your body shows up differently every time you come into your practice. So really become in tune with what you're feeling here. Where are you tight? Where are you loose? What needs a little bit of TLC today? Awesome. If your feet have separated, bring them back together. Toes, heels, touch. Squat deeply. Glue your chest to your thighs. Wrap your arms behind your legs. Scoop up the heels or Achilles from behind. Try to get those elbows as close as you can from the get-go behind the legs. Once you have your grip, drop your head, lift your hips up towards the ceiling. You're using your arms, so draw the shoulders up your back and really feel the biceps working for you. If there's any tension in the head, let it go. Let it drip down towards your toes. This will help to create traction in the spine and give you even more length. Now take an inhale. As you exhale, pull, pull, pull. Interlace your fingers. Come out the way you went in. Straight spine, firm belly, all the way back up to standing with arms overhead. And now relax your arms down by your side. Moving on to our awkward series. Take a six-inch step to your right. Second toe will face the front mirrors. Draw your arms up parallel to the mat, squeezing all of your fingers together. Now shrug your shoulders up and back, and then sit back towards the back of your mat and poke the butt out to accentuate the curve in the lower spine. Check your knees in the mirror. If they've splayed out or knocked in, adjust them so that they're right back above the ankles. And then sometimes our feet will fan out, so try to keep that second toe pointing forward so feet stay parallel to one another. Now hoist your heart up and back for a bit of a back bend. Sit down a little bit lower. 
Come back up to standing. Keep those arms engaged. Now come up all the way up onto your tippy toes as high as you can go. Now with that height in your heels, slowly make your way down. So think knees forward, heels up. Knees forward, heels up. When you feel the heels begin to fall, that's where you want to stop and work. This part of the posture is more about the height of your heels, not so much about how low you can sit. You're strengthening the arches of your feet. Check your knees. Make sure they're still living right above the ankles. And then think top of head to the ceiling so that the spine stays nice and straight. Now lift the heels a little higher. See if you can sit a little lower. Good. Now come all the way back up to standing. Keep those arms engaged. Bring your heels down on the mat. Last part of the posture. Come up onto your tippy toes just enough to squeeze your knees together at center. And now as slow as you can go with control, begin to make your way down. So no rush here. We're going all the way down as far as you can. The goal here is for eventually one day the hips will hover right above the heels. Now, if you have healthy knees, go ahead and take a few bounces, ending on an up bounce for a bit of a challenge. We want to keep the knees pointing towards the front of your mat while shoulders will stay right above the hips. We're creating a 90 degree angle between the torso and the thighs. Now, just as slow as you went down, make your way up. Use those powerful legs to bring you back to standing. And then release the heels, release the arms, bring your feet to touch. Last part of our warm-up, it's eagle wrap. Sweep your arms sideways and up, press your palms above your head. Identify your right hand and then sweep right arm under left, crossing at the elbows, wrists, thumbs will face you. Now, if this grip is not accessible, you always have the option of giving yourself a big bear hug. Squat down into a low squat, and then pick up your right leg. Cross it up and over the left, crossing at the thigh, and then maybe you sneak it around, get a double wrap at the ankle, maybe not. Either way, you just keep those toes pointing straight down towards the mat, and one day you will. Check your knees. They do tend to shift when you cross. So if they did shift to the left, bring them back to center. The goal here is to have your knees, elbows, and wrists all in one straight line. Now sit down a little bit lower. Push your heart forward and up to honor a back bend. Squeeze your elbows down for compression. Unravel. Sweep your arms above your head and then immediately left arm under right. Crossing at the elbows, wrists, thumbs will face you. Remember you have the option for the bear hug on this side. Sit down into your squat and then pick up the left leg. Cross it up and over the right, crossing at the side. And then if you do have your double wrap down at the ankle, challenge yourself. Keep the toes pointing down the back of your leg rather than hooking them around so that you can you continue to strengthen your calf. If your knees have shifted to the right, get them back to center so that all of your major joints are in alignment. Now sit down a little bit lower. It helps with the balance. Push your heart forward and up. Now squeeze your elbows down. See if you can start to peek over your fingertips. Unravel. Sweep your arms above your head. Press your palms. Float your arms down by your side. Wonderful warm-up, you guys. You've made it to your first and only official water break. So if you'd like to take some water, go ahead and do that now. Small sips are all that you need, no guzzling, because we will be down on our belly shortly, and we don't want a belly full of water at that time. And from here on out, you manage your water on your own. Take it in between the postures. All I ask is that you wait until you're in between the postures so that you don't become distracted by your water. Water can be a great distractor, so keep it to the side. Take it in between the postures and really focus on yourself and your practice. Now bring yourself back to the center of your mat, feet touch, arms down by your side. Take a nice deep full inhale and exhale to welcome the standing series. Squeeze your left leg strong. Pick up your right knee, thigh parallel to the mat. Flex your toes towards your face and now 
suck the belly in as you round down and make a basket with all 10 fingers at the ball of your foot. If the ball of your foot is not accessible today, you can reach right around and interlace your fingers right below the knee. The goal here is a straight, strong standing leg and a curved spine. We stay in this phase of the posture for at least 20 seconds. I usually stay the whole first minute just for that stability. If your standing leg is bent or wobbly, stay here. It's important to get that strong and solid first. If it is solid, you can kick your heel out towards the mirror. Now, it's really important. If you're kicking out, flex the toes towards your face and draw the shoulders down your back to elongate the spine. If you find that one or both legs are bent or wobble, you dial it back. Then, once you find your stability, you can try again. There's never any rush to get into final phase. You have three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Bring your feet to touch, arms down by your side. And we stress this very much in this posture. If you kick out in this posture and your body is not ready for it, then you're risking injury. So it's much better to just take your time, find your stability, and remember that yoga is a lifelong practice. You don't have to do it all today. Let's try the other side. Squeeze your right leg strong. Pick up your left knee, thigh parallel to the mat. Flex your toes towards your face and now Suck your belly in as you round down and get that basket to the ball of your foot or around the front of the shin. Now we suck the belly in to make space, but if you had to lift the thigh to get a hold of your foot, bring it back down. You want your thigh parallel to the mat, heel directly below the knee. If the standing leg is bent or wobbly, stay here. This is where I'm staying for this first minute. If it's solid, you can kick your heel out towards the mirror. And as you kick out, flex the toes towards your face. Draw the shoulders down your spine. You want a nice, long spine in this second phase. If two legs are solid, begin to squeeze the elbows down towards the calf line. And once they make it down two inches below, then you round your, your forehead to touch your knee. Now, that's a lot to take in. So for the last five seconds, find a place to end balancing no matter where you are. For three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Feet together, arms by your side. Let's do it again. Half as long. Squeeze your left leg strong. Pick up your right knee. Side parallel to the mat. Flex your toes towards your face. And now go for it. Suck your belly in. Round down. Capture your foot. And now you have 30 seconds to take this posture wherever you want to take that today. So maybe you're in setup or first phase. Wonderful. Maybe you're ready to kick out. Maybe your legs bend. Once you kick out, you dial it back. If they're solid, go ahead and try to squeeze those elbows down. Maybe you go into fourth phase. Round your forehead to press against your knee. You have three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Feet together, arms by your side. Squeeze your right leg strong. Pick up your left knee, side parallel to the mat. Flex your toes towards your face and now go for it. Suck your belly in, round down, and work into your posture. Remembering that this practice builds on itself. So we never want to blow past one phase and get to the next. Pause in between the phases. Give them their moment. And then if you're ready, you move forward. If you need a little extra time in one phase, take it. You have five seconds to work here. So end strong, end balancing, even if it's in setup for three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Feet together, arms by your side. Take a nice deep full inhale. And exhale, let it all go. Moving on to standing bow. Right elbow to right waist, stand palm faces up. With your hand exactly the way it is, drop it down. Grab your right foot from the inside arch. Squeeze your knees together. Lift your left arm up, palm 
facing the mirror and now slowly begin to kick and reach. So this is standing bow and you've got a whole minute here. Point the toes, kick back to where the ceiling and wall meet behind you. Reach for that very same place at the front of the room. We're looking for extension here. So try not to dip right into this. Really point the toes and kick up and back as you reach forward and up and find that back bend in your low spine. The tendency here is that the hips will open to the right. So if that's happening, dial it back. Squeeze your knees together, and then as you kick back, think belly button straight down towards the mat so that the hips stay square. In this version of standing bow, we want the hips squared off towards the mat so that you really get into your full expression of that lower back bend, the bowing of the standing bow. If you do see the toes poking up above your head behind you, then you can hinge forward and reach for the bridge of your nose in the mirror. You have three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Bring your feet together. Arms down by your sides. Left elbow to left waistband. Palm up. Keep your hand exactly how it is. Drop your hand. Grab your left foot from the inside arch. We tend to twist here. So open the palm and grab the foot from the inside arch. Thumb will stay pointing up towards the ceiling. Squeeze your knees together, lift your right arm up, stretch up as tall as you can, and now slowly begin to kick and reach. This is a 50-50 effort here, so as hard as you're kicking back, you're reaching forward. Again, try not to rush into hinging forward here. Really find that length. Kick so hard that you begin to expose the back of your left knee. Once you start to see your toes peeking up above your head, then you can hinge forward and reach for the bridge of your nose in the mirror. But until that happens, feel the stretch. And watch the hips. If they've opened up towards the left side of the room, dial it back. Squeeze the knees together. And then as you kick back, it's belly button straight down towards the mat so that the hips stay square. Kick so hard into your left hand that your left shoulder starts to peel back, allowing for the right shoulder to come underneath the chin, creating a twist in the upper spine. And then smile and end balancing. You have three, two, one. Reverse your actions. Feet together, arms by your sides. And you'll notice here, I have really tight quads, so I can't go very deep in this posture. If I'm trying to, to honor the, the alignment of it. So I'm trying to keep those hips square. I'm trying to keep my body lengthened. I'm not just dumping forward because then I'm missing out on my stretch. Let's do it again. Bring your right elbow to right waistband, palm up. Drop your hand. Reach for your right foot from the inside arch. Squeeze the knees together. Lift the left arm up. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Nice and tall. And now go for it. And you have 30 seconds in your standing bow. And even though it's 30 seconds, work nice and slow. Use micro movements rather than momentum. If you use your micro movements, you're using your muscles. You're getting stronger and you're stretching. Feel that stretch in the hip flexor. Feel that twist in the upper spine. Feel that bowing in the lower spine. There's a lot going on here. You have three Two, one, reverse your actions, feet together, arms by your side. Left elbow to left waistband, palm up, keep that palm up, drop the hand, don't twist, but drop the hand, grab the left foot from the inside arch. Squeeze your knees together, lift the right arm up, stretch, 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 keep that length, and now go for it. 30 seconds on this side, kick back. Reach forward and check in with your breath. Are you still breathing? Postures that are difficult, you sometimes want to clench your breath. So allow it to flow freely in and out through the nose, oxygenating all of the muscles in your body and using your breath as oxygen, as fuel to sustain you in your, in your posture. You have about five more seconds here. Keep breathing for three, two, one, reverse your actions, feet together, arms by your side. Take a nice deep full inhale, 
Exhale, let it go. Good. If you're not already there, take a little walk to the back of your mat. Bring your feet together. Sweep your arms sideways and up. Interlace your fingers. Release the index. Cross the thumbs. Take a big step forward with your right foot. Point the left toes and now hinge forward. Get long. So point those toes and kick back as you reach forward. This isn't necessarily about getting parallel to the mat. It's about creating a long line of energy from fingertips to toes. So kick back a little harder. Point forward a little bit more. And then bring your feet to touch. Good. Take a big step forward with the right foot, or the left foot, sorry. Point the right toes and then hinge forward. Get long. As if somebody's pulling you from the toes and the fingers at the same exact time. Now roll your right hip down to square off the hips and look down and a little bit forward to keep the neck spine long. Change. Feet touch at the back. Relax the arms down by your sides. You can take a few knee bends here and then take a little walk to the top of your mat and quarter turn towards the right. So you should be standing at the top of your mat, feet together. Sweep the arms sideways and out, press your palms above your head. Take a big forefoot step to the right, arms parallel to the mat. Now, your heels should be directly below the wrist. It's wider than you think it is. Pigeon toe the toes in towards one another and then really engage your belly. Pull your belly strong and then hinge forward, swan dive forward. Nice. When your face passes your waist, gaze down at the mat. With your hands, you have some options. You can reach around, scoop up the heels from behind. You can reach for the outer blades of your feet, or you can reach directly down in front of you on the mat. Now roll some weight into the toes, and if you have a mirror, peek left. Check your spine. We want to maintain a long spine. So if you see that your spine is curving, bend your knees some to give your spine some length. Now gaze back down on the mat and with whatever grip you're, you have, begin to pull. Bend the elbows, allow the forearms to graze the shins. Good. As you inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, pull. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull. Pull, pull. Swan dive out. Bring right foot to meet left. Press your palms overhead. And then float your arms down by your sides. And you can take some knee bends here. If you feel dizzy, this will help to get the blood circulating back up to the heart. And now we've made it to our peak pose of class. We have our triangle pose. Sweep your arms sideways and up. Press your palms above your head. Take your forefoot step to the right. Arms parallel to the mat. Now pivot on the right heel and lunge into the right leg. Take a moment to find your alignment. So it's knee in line with ankle. That often means a little bit of a wider stance. Flip the palms towards the front of the room. Look over the left shoulder and then tilt down. Find that notch in your knee where your elbow fits perfectly. Bottom finger should be floating right above first and second toe. There is no weight going into that bottom hand. Now, your top fingers are reaching towards the ceiling, but we want to keep the shoulders drawn down your back. Push a little bit more weight into the outer blade of the back foot so that you can turn your left hip more forward and down. Good. Yes. Really engage through the belly so that you're taking a little bit of power in there. And then as you look up towards the back of your hand, reach your arms a little further apart. Tilt to come out. Straighten the leg. Pivot the heel. Pivot on the left heel and lunge. Find the alignment. Knee in line with ankle. Then flip the palms. Look to your right and tilt. Get the elbow to the inside of the knee and then peek down and see where your fingertips are at. If they're not floating right above first and second toe, use the elbow against the knee to make that happen. This also ensures that your knee is in proper alignment. Push more weight into the outer blade of the back foot so that you can really power up through that back leg. And then we keep the belly engaged so that we take pressure off the low back. As you look up towards the back of your hand, keep your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Try not to let your head droop one way or the other. 
tilt to come out, straighten the leg, pivot the heel, bring right foot to meet left, press your palms overhead, and then float your arms down by your side, and breathe. Beautiful. Now the traditional triangle, you do float the fingers on the, the bottom hand. If you need a modification for that, you can always bend the elbow and rest it on your thigh. That is an option for you. You get another opportunity, so let's do it again. Sweep the arms sideways and up, press your palms above your head. Take your forefoot step to the right, arms parallel to the mat. Pivot on the right heel, lunge into the right leg, find the alignment. Then flip the palms, look to your left, and tilt. Get the elbow to the inside of the knee, and then really squeeze that back leg nice and strong. Your legs are strong. You can do it. Now sink a little bit lower into your lunge. One day your thigh will be parallel to the mat, and as you look up towards the back of your hand, reach your arms further apart. Now listen carefully. Stay in your lunge. Tilt to come out. Straighten the leg, pivot the heel, pivot on the left heel, and lunge. Be in line with ankle. Then flip the palms, look to your right, and tilt. Get the elbow to the inside of the knee, and then see if you can sink a little bit lower on this side. Your legs may be telling you stories, but you are stronger than your mind wants you to believe. Push more weight into the outer blade of that back foot so that you can power up through that leg. Keep the power going straight through the core, out through the crown of your head. As you look up towards the back of your hand, smile because it's your last triangle. Tilt to come out. Straighten the leg. Pivot the heel. Bring right foot to meet left. Press your palms. And now allow your arms to float down by your sides. Beautiful. Take some breaths. Some nice, slow, deep breaths here. And now we work into our final side-stepping posture. Sweep your arms sideways and up. Press your palms. Cross your thumbs only. Take a smaller step, about three feet to the right, and then pivot on both heels to face the back wall. So look down at your legs. You should be standing on railroad tracks, not a tightrope, and then Put, um, bump your left hip forward a couple of times so that the hips square off. Now squeeze your biceps up by your ears, tuck chin into chest, and then really round down. So think upper back, middle back, lower back, rounds. Once your hands reach the mat, bring your forehead to press against your knee. This is not pyramid pose. We're after compression here. So bend the knee as much as you need to to make that forehead to knee connection. Bend the knee as much as you need to to make that forehead to knee connection. Good. Now uh, push more weight into the front foot as you staple that back foot down to square the hip. And then test your balance. See what happens if you walk your hands a little bit closer. Nice. Now bring them all the way back together. Straighten the front leg as slow as you can go. Uncurl. Let the chin be the last to release. Good. Now pivot to face the left, and then pivot to face the front of the room. This is really hard without students to, to kind of giving, give me markers. Bump the right hip forward a couple of times, and then look down at your feet so that you make sure that they're on railroad tracks, not a tightrope. Squeeze the biceps up by the ears, tuck chin into chest, and then... Curl into yourself, nice and tight, upper back, middle back, lower back will round. Once your hands reach the mat, press the forehead against your knee, bending your knee as much as you need to to make that connection. Now, there's a purpose for this. This is meant to massage and activate the thyroid gland. So that compression on the throat, with every breath that you take, you are taking a little bit of extra care of that very important thyroid gland.
push a little bit more weight into the front foot as you staple the back foot down to square off your hip and then see what happens if you walk your hands a little bit closer together bring them all the way back to prayer straighten your front leg and then nice and slow don't launch out uncurl one vertebrae at a time let your chin release last pivot to the right bring right foot to meet left float your arms down by your sides good one more standing posture turn towards the front of your mat for tree pose so we want to bring our feet together I like to be at the center of the mat, especially if you plan to go into toe stand. Arms will come down by your side. Just take a breath. Give yourself a moment to just reacquaint yourself from this perspective. Squeeze the left leg strong. Pick up the right foot. Cradle it into your left hand. Palm stays open towards the front of the room. Grip your foot like a bicep curl. Bring the heel as high as you can on the hip crease and allow your knee to glide down towards the mat. Then it's right hand to heart center, thumb to sternum. Left hand only meets it if your foot doesn't slip. If your foot slips, hold on to it. This is a hip opener here. Now you can stay right here in your tree, or if you're interested in taking it into a toe stand, begin to hinge forward on a straight leg. Once your hands reach the mat, bend your knee, lift your heel, and then perch your hips right up onto your heel. Then you'll bring your hands one at a time to either side, finding the balance. And then maybe you work your hands one at a time to heart center, keeping the belly nice and tight. Trees, if you're still in your tree, continue to hold this space. If you went into toe, go ahead and fall forward. Meet us in tree. And then you take a nice deep full inhale and exhale. Release your right leg. Squeeze your right leg strong. Pick up your left foot. Cradle it into your right hand. Palm open towards the front mirrors like a bicep curl. Get the heel as high as you can on the hip crease and then allow the knee to glide down. Then it's left hand to heart center, thumb to sternum. Right hand meets it if the foot doesn't slip. If you're going into toe, go ahead and take your pose. I'll talk to the trees on this side. Trees, root down through your foot. Plug big toe, little toe, and heel into the mat. Squeeze up nice and tight on that leg. And then watch the glutes. A lot of us tend to poke the booty out. Really focus on tucking the tailbone under, pulling the low belly in to protect your low back. Stand with a nice proud chest. Draw your shoulders down your back. If you went into toe stand, fall forward. Meet us in tree. And we'll take a nice deep full inhale and exhale. Release the left leg to the mat. Great standing practice, you guys. Go ahead and honor that practice. It's a good time to take some water. Wipe off the sweat if you decided to go into a warm room. And then go ahead and make your way into Savasana. And with the Savasana, we're going to place our head at the top of the mat. Extend your feet towards the back of your mat. That way uh, we are all facing the right direction. Now, Savasana in this practice is very structured, so bring your heels together. Allow the toes to flop open. Arms are down by your side, palms up. This is especially important if you're practicing in a warm room. It helps to release some heat. Soften the elbows to release tension in the arms. Soften the glutes. Soften the jaw. Tuck your chin slightly to lengthen the back of your neck. And keep your eyes open. The reason we keep the eyes open is so that we stay present. Sometimes closing the eyes, our thoughts begin to wander. So stay with me, stay with yourself, and breathe.
when removing pose. Bring your right knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers two inches below the knee. Navigate your knee out around and then in towards the right armpit. Pin the left shoulder back down on the mat and then hug your elbows towards the torso. You want a nice flat back here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, squeeze the knee towards the right armpit. Let's do it again. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Release the right leg long. Bring the left knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers two inches below the knee. Navigate your knee out around and in towards the left armpit. Hug the elbows in. Pin the right shoulder down. And then keep gazing down center line of body so that the back of your neck stays long. Take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze the knee towards the armpit. Do it again. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Left leg long. Now bring both knees into your chest. Give yourself a great big hug. If you are able to grab opposite elbows, please do so. Otherwise, just get as tight as you can. Relax your head down onto the mat and then keep the chin tucked so that you lengthen the back of your neck. Take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze your knees into the chest. Good. Once more. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Relax your legs. Heels in, toes out, arms by your sides, palms up. And now we use a very specific hot yogi sit-up to transition us through the floor series. I'll break it down for you, but the key here is to hold your breath until you reach for your toes and exhale twice. If you've never done this before, don't worry. You will have plenty of opportunities to get it. Bring your feet together. Flex your toes towards your face. Extend your arms up above your head. Hook your thumbs like a butterfly. Inhale. Hold it. Sit up. Double exhale. Reach for your toes. Good. Now turn around. Lie on your belly for cobra pose. Palms will come directly below your shoulders. Chin will come to the mat. Extend your legs behind you and bring your toes and heels to touch. Now press the tops of your feet down into the mat so that you activate your legs. Now look up and lift your chest by using the strength of your upper back, not your hands. This is not a push-up. So you should be able to float your palms up off the mat and use your back strength to lift you. Continue to look up as you lift up. And relax. Left ear to the mat. Look to the right. Toes in. Heels out, arms by your sides, and palms face up. And just breathe. Try to keep the eyes open. Find a soft gaze on something nearby. And slow the breath. Half locust. Bring your chin to the mat. Flip your palms to touch your mat. And then lift one hip at a time. Get your hands underneath you. It's very common for people to want to touch their thighs, but what we want here is for the palms to touch the mat. Try to get as much forearm as you can underneath you. Maybe your pinky will even touch. Allow the left leg to relax, point the right toes, and then kick your right leg back and then up. Good. We're looking for length, not so much height. So point those toes and kick back. If you notice the hip and the forearm have lost connection, roll your hip back down. Make that connection. Now sole of the foot to the ceiling. Kick back. Kick up. Relax your right leg. Point the left toes. Kick left leg back and then up. So think back of knee to the ceiling to keep that leg nice and straight and watch the forearm to hip connection. If you've lost it, bring your left hip back down. Connect it to the forearm. Now sole of the foot to the ceiling. Kick back. Kick up. And relax your left leg. Please tuck your chin so that the lips kiss the mat. It's very important here that the lips stay pressed onto the mat to protect your spine. You can shimmy your hands a little closer to the knees, but keep those palms down on the mat, not touching your thighs. 
And now zip up your legs, make them one. Point both sets of toes. Kick your legs back and then up. Yes, it doesn't take much to feel this. Press the palms into the mat to help lift you a little bit higher. And then roll the weight into your shoulders to get you even higher. Now see if you can come up just a little bit higher. And change. Get the arms out from underneath you. Right here to the mat. Look left. And just breathe. And so the reason for that funky arm placement, I always like to, to tell people why we do that, it's to constrict the blood flow to the arms. So this practice is not only about the strength of the spine, it's also about the strength of the circulatory system. We compress different parts of the body, in this case it was our arm, so that when we let it go, we're getting a nice rush of oxygenated blood flowing through our body. Moving on to full locus, bring your chin to the mat, arms come out to your sides, palms down like airplane wings. Squeeze the legs together, make them one. Now look up and lift up everything, your thighs, your feet, your chest, even your eyes. Flip the palms towards the front of the room to broaden through the chest. Now go up for three, a little higher, two, one. Relax, bring it all down, left ear to the mat, look right. You can bring your arms down by your sides, palms up, toes in, heels out. And we turn the head from side to side so that we get a nice even stretch of the neck muscles. So really try to honor that by pressing your entire cheek and ear onto the mat. Final uh, spine strengthener, it's a furbo. So bring your chin to the mat, pick your heels up towards your butt, reach for your feet from the outside. So making your arms little suspension cables for your legs. Try to bring your knees to sh uh, shoulder hips width apart, if not closer. Now point your toes, kick them into your hands as you lift your chest. Good. Now roll the weight into your chest. This will help to get you a little bit higher. And then if your knees splayed way out, bring them back in. Point those toes and kick up. Look for them with your eyes. One day you're going to see them. Kick. You got this. Three, two, one. Relax. Right ear to the mat. Look left. And in this final belly savasana, go ahead and take a nice deep full inhale into your backside body. Hold it. And now let it all go. Bring your palms directly below your shoulders. You can either do a full push-up or use your knees to push up. And then come to the top of the mat for fixed firm. Squeeze your knees together. Separate the heels so that your hips sit down between the heels. This may be a stopping point for many of us. My hips do not touch the mat. It's perfectly fine. Bring one hand at a time to your side. Drop the head back. Press the chest up. You are still getting the back bend right here. If your hips do make contact and you'd like to take it a little bit further, reach for one foot at a time and then lower down one elbow at a time. If your knees are still fixed and firm, that means together and down, then you can maybe bring the top of your head down, shoulders. Final expression here would be to reach for opposite elbows above the head. And I cannot demo that for you. <laughs> so please make sure that you're only taking it to full expression if your body allows for it. You never want to muscle your way through this posture. Take an inhale. Exhale. Gently make your way out one elbow at a time if you went all the way down. And then turn around and lie down in your savasana. And here we've compressed the blood flow to the lower part of your leg. So keeping those knees together and down, when we come out, it's like that tourniquet effect. Uh, you allow the blood to rush through the bottom part of your leg into the feet, the toes, keeping that circulation healthy and strong with time and practice. And now 
we'll do another sit up. Feet together, toes flex, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale, sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes. Now sit down onto your heels towards the back of your mat. This time you'll sit directly onto the heels. Sweep your arms sideways and now press your palms across your thumbs. Now let's stretch up as tall as you can. Give yourself some length and use your strong core to hinge forward and down. Try to get the forehead down to the mat before the hands, even if it means lifting your hips. I will have to lift my hips here. Now this is not a child's pose, we keep it active. So once the forehead meets the mat, untuck your chin. Think tip of nose to the mat. As you inhale, you swim your hands closer to the top of your mat. As you exhale, sink the hips down and back. Whether they touch the heels or not is irrelevant. The action of sinking the hips down and back will stretch and strengthen that spine. As you inhale, swim forward. As you exhale, anchor back. Now squeeze the knees. Use your belly. Hinge forward and up. It's a strong moment. You've got it. Now relax the arms. Turn around. Lie down. And now we've made it to our deepest back bend of class. We have camel pose. We will do one, but the good news is it is recorded. So if you're one of the yogis that I have in class that loves camel and wants to do two, you can always rewind and do a second one. Let's do a sit up to get us there. Feet together, toes flex, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale, sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes. Now come to standing on your knees at the center of your mat. Separate the knees about six inches apart. A good measurement for that is to place two snug fists between the knees. You want to hide your heels behind your knees. Now bring your hands to your low back. Fingers point down. It's not your booty. It's your low back. Squeeze the elbows together. Begin to send the hips forward as you look up and then back. Good. So the goal in camel is to try to keep the hips directly above the knees. This right here may be a great stopping point. If you wish to take it a little bit deeper, begin to reach one hand at a time for the heels. Fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outsides. Really important. Keep squeezing the glutes and pushing the hips forward to protect your low back, keeping those hips above the knee. Push your heart up towards the ceiling. Keep the lips sealed and breathe through the nose so that you can really stretch through the neck. Now bring your hands to your low back, help yourself up, level out the chin, sit back down onto your heels, and then turn around and lie down. And we often become a little bit, our breathing becomes a little bit overwhelmed after this posture. We have had a deep back bend here, but we've also compressed the whole front side of the body. So it's all of our major organs and arteries that were compressed, and when we come out, Sometimes that rush of blood through our system tends to get the heart rate going. So if you slow your breath, your heart will follow. Let's make our way to rabbit pose. Feet together, toes flexed, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale. Sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes. Now turn around, sit onto your heels at the back of your mat or close to the back of your mat. If you have a towel and you'd like a dry grip, go ahead and flip that towel over your feet. It is not a requirement, just an option. And then bring your hands to your heels. Fingers on the inside, thumbs on the outside. People sometimes have a bit of trouble here. So think standing bow hand and drop it down. Reach for your heels. So we don't want to twist. We want to keep that arm open. Good. Now, uh, tuck your chin into your chest and begin to curl into yourself. Nice and tight. Try to get the forehead to skim the knees, crown of the head to the floor. And once the crown of your head has met the mat, then you lift your hips up towards the ceiling. And you're using the strength of that grip into your heels to keep very little weight onto your head. It should feel like if you were to let go of your heels, you would do a little forward roll. 
keep that chin tucked and keep breathing through the nose. We have that same compression effect on the thyroid gland here. So keep that chin tucked nice and tight. Squeeze the heels together. Maybe you get those fingernails to touch. If you want an added challenge here, try walking your hips a little bit closer to the forehead. Bring your hips to your heels, uncurl slow, and then turn around and lie down. Same concept here. We get that deep forward flexion, but we compress the back side of the body. If your heart rate felt like it spiked, the slower you breathe, the slower your heart rate. And again, if you crave a second rabbit, go ahead and rewind me here. Otherwise, we're going to move forward to our final postures. Feet together, toes flexed, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale, sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes, spin around, extend the right heel towards the upper right hand corner of the mat, place the sole of your left foot into your right side, sweep your arms above your head, make a basket with your fingers, turn over the right leg, and then ground down, get the basket to the ball of the foot, forehead to the knee. So this is another one where you bend the knee as much as you need to to make that connection. Roll your left shoulder in so that you're evenly stretching your upper back and then squeeze those elbows towards the calf line rather than out to the sides of the room. Flex the toes towards your face to feel a nice stretch along the back of your leg. Come on up and switch. Left leg out, right foot in. Turn over your left foot and then... Round down, get the basket to the ball of the foot, forehead to the knee, bending your knee as much as you need to to make that connection. Root both sits bones down into the mat and then curl your right shoulder under slightly so that you're evenly stretching your upper back. Elbows will continue to press towards the calf line so that you get that compression of the lymph nodes under your armpits and then flow up. Um, Flex the toes towards your face to stretch the back of your leg. Come on up. Now extend both legs out. Lay back down onto the mat. As soon as your back hits the mat, inhale. Double exhale. Reach for your toes. Take your two piece fingers. Make some hooks. Wrap those hooks right around your big toes. And then again, bend your knees if you need to to get that connection. Shimmy your hips out from underneath you so that you're sitting nice and straight, and we're searching for a nice straight spine here. So as you inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend the elbows. Pull the collarbone to the toes, so no tucking of the chin here. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, pull. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull. Pull, pull. Spin around, lie down. We've made it now to our spinal twisting. Feet together, toes flexed, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale. Sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes. Take a quarter turn towards the left. Bend your left knee out in front of you. Cross your right foot up and over the left knee. Now, if your hips are not square, you have the option of extending the bottom leg. Bring your right hand behind you, fingers pointing back. Inhale your left arm up, and exhale, hook it over the knee. And use the elbow into the knee to help twist you. Look over the right shoulder so that you include your neck. As you inhale, push the floor away, lengthen the spine. Exhale, elbow into knee for a twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist, twist, twist. Unravel and switch. So now it's right knee or leg out in front of you. Left foot up and over the right knee. Bring your left hand behind you, fingers back. Inhale your right arm up. Exhale, hook it over the knee and look over the left shoulder. Include your neck here. Keep that back arm close to the spine so that you're really lengthening. Push the floor away. As you inhale, give yourself even more length. Exhale, elbow into the knee. Twist into that space. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to twist. 
twist, twist. Unravel, lie down. And now we've made it through all of our postures and we have a final breathing exercise to complete. Let's do our strongest sit up of the day to get us there. Feet together, toes flexed, arms up, hook your thumbs, inhale. Sit up, double exhale, reach for your toes. Now come to sitting on your heels at the center of your mat. If sitting on the heels is not comfortable, go ahead and sit cross-legged. What we want here is a nice tall seat. So if you're sitting on the heels, reach for your knees. If you're sitting cross-legged, reach your arms out to your side. Sit up nice and tall so that your vertebrae stacks one on top of the other. And our final breathing is a series of 60 exhales through the mouth by way of a snapping of the belly. The intention here is on the exhales, the inhales will happen on their own. And you'll, you'll have 60 opportunities. So if you don't get it at first, just keep trying. The exhales are a snapping of the belly. It's almost like a, a little crunch with the belly with every exhale. Part your lips slightly, please. Exhale all of your air. Now inhale halfway and begin. my class today. It's nothing like it would be at the studio, but at least you have a little piece of me to take with you and practice your hot 26 during this time of social distancing. I really look forward to seeing you all in person soon. The light in me sees, honors, and loves the light in each and every one of you. Be well. Namaste.